and welcome to the first official lesson in the dog color genetics series. In this episode, we will be talking about two loci in the dog genetics, the K locus and the A locus. If you did not understand what I meant by that, please go watch the introduction video as it will explain the terminologies I will be using in this series. When we see a black dog, we can know that it has the default eumelanin color. But when other genes interact with black, other colors can come about, such as liver, blue, and Isabella. That, however, is another lesson. Dogs with eumelanin means they will have a black nose and almost always brown eyes. When it comes to the K locus, we can have two basic choices for our dog's markings. Solid, with no red markings, or non-solid, where red markings can show of any sort. And whether a dog has a solid black coat or a coat with red and black depends entirely on this locus. The K locus consists of three alleles. Big K, which is dominant black, little K, BR, which is brindle, and little K, which is non-black and allows red and black markings but will always have a black nose. Black is dominant, so a dog with one big K gene will be a solid black and a dog who is homozygous little k will be able to show red markings. How these red and tan markings are determined are through the A locus, which I will touch in later in this episode. A big K, big K, or big K, little k dog may be genetically a tan point or a sable in the A locus, but it won't show because of the dominant black's allele. Dominant black dominates over the A locus, but dominant black can be modified by other genes, like liver, dilution, graying, and merle. All of these genes will alter the way the black dog would look, but they cannot add red to the coat. The only way red can be added to the coat of a dog with dominant black is through a gene located in the E locus called recessive red. This would mean a dominant black dog, or any dog, would be turned into a solid red dog with a black nose. When we try to figure out how that would look genetically, let's go into hypothetical breedings. If two dominant black dogs mate, you would think that they would only be able to produce black puppies. However, this isn't always the case. If we had two dogs mates that were homozygous big K, then all of their puppies would also be homozygous big K. If one dog was homozygous big K and one dog was heterozygous big K, all the puppies would still be black, but about half the litter of the puppies would be heterozygous big K. If two heterozygous big K dogs mated, we would have a 25% chance of having a homozygous big K puppy, 50% chance of having a heterozygous big K puppy, and 25% chance of having a homozygous little K puppy, which means they would not be dominant black and could possibly be an entirely different color or pattern. If a homozygous big K dog mated with a homozygous little K dog, their entire litter would be heterozygous big K and be all black. If a heterozygous K dog mated with a homozygous little K dog, half of their puppies would be heterozygous black and half of the puppies would be homozygous non-blacks. And if two homozygous little K dogs mated, all of their puppies would be homozygous little K. Before I move on to the A locus, there are a few things I would like to point out. There is a color called seal that is a mystery. Geneticists have not figured out how seal works exactly. Seal makes a black dog appear brown with the nose remaining black and can vary from a slight brown to a liver coloring, but seals always have a black strip down their back and their legs and tails are generally darker. It is unknown which locus is responsible for seal. Some theories say that seal is an allele in the K locus and is recessive to dominant black but dominant to brindle or is a faulty gene. Some say it is allele in the A locus or a modifier of an unknown locus. It can also be combined with liver, blue, Isabella, and Merle. Now we will learn about the A locus, which is a mixture of black and red and their specific patterns. When a dog is homozygous little K, that is when the A locus shines through. And although a homozygous or heterozygous big K dog doesn't show a goody, it is still in its genes. The A locus is also called the Agouti series. Agouti controls which cells produce eumelanin, so black pigment, or liver blue and Isabella when modified, and when it produces pheomelanin, or red. 
The spread of eumelanin and pheomelanin hair is followed by all the genes in the A locus except recessive black. There are four known alleles in the A locus. Big A, which is sable. Little AW, which is wolf gray. Little AT, which is tan point, And little A, which is recessive black. Sable is the top dominant gene in the A locus, so a dog only needs one sable allele to express it. But what exactly is sable? Sable means that the dog's fur is red, but tipped with black. There are at least three types of sable patterns, but it's not certain what causes each to appear. Some speculate that sable is affected by an unidentified modifier. The three common types of sable are clear sable, tipped sable, and shaded sable. Clear sable are completely red dogs with just a few eumelanin hairs. They can be almost impossible to distinguish from recessive red. If there is any black, liver, blue, or Isabella in the coat at all, the dog must be a sable rather than a recessive red. The tipped sables are red dogs with eumelanin hairs usually on the back, head, ears, and tail. It seems that most tipped sables also have masks, which are a part of the E locus. Shaded sables are red dogs with brown and black hairs covering the top of their heads, ears, and backs. The shading can be very light or very dark. A distinctive feature is the widow's peak on the forehead, where the brown or black creates a point. Shaded sable occurs mostly in long hair breeds. Wolf gray, or also known as just agouti, is one of the oldest mammal color genes. It can also be found in rodents, deer, wild rabbits, cats, and is, of course, the main color of the wolf. Wolf gray's hair is banded, which means that as the fur grows, the cells that produce pigments switch to another type. So the common example is the fur starts out as black, then switches to red, then back to black again, and keeps switching as the hair grows longer. In its normal form, wolf gray can be almost identical to shaded silver, but the main difference is the banded hairs. If you can't get close enough to see the hair, the general pattern is also different. Wolf gray tends to follow the same pattern as traditional tan points, rather than how shaded sables look. The tan point gene is almost the bottom recessive in the A locus. The range of markings on a tan point are very restricted. The red hairs, or tan in this pattern, appears as pips above the eyes, on their muzzles that extend to their cheeks, pips on the cheeks, and on the front of their necks or just below the head, two triangular patches on the front of the chest, on the lower legs and paws and as a patch under the tail. Sometimes black marks can be seen on the toes, which is called penciling. Tan points can also be liver in red, blue in red and Isabella red, and Merle in red. Sometimes the face markings can be covered by a mask, but the rest of the usual patterns are the same. But sometimes heavy shaded sables can have the appearance of a tan point, but they will usually have red markings on parts of the body that traditional tan points don't have. It was previously thought that the saddle and creeping tans had their own alleles in the A locus, but it is now thought that they have their own modifiers in the tan point gene. These modifiers, though, have not been located. The saddle and creeping tan modifier causes the black on a black and tan dog to retreat to the dog's back, leaving the rest of the coat red. A dog with a creeping tan pattern has slightly more red than a normal black and tan, usually spreading around the eyes and further up on the legs. The saddle pattern is the next step up, where the red extends over the whole head, the front of the chest, neck, and the top of the legs, leaving black only on the back tail and the back of the neck. Saddled and creeping tan dogs are usually born as tan points, but the black recedes as the dog grows. The saddle pattern is the main color of the German Shepherd, although these dogs are known as just black and tan. Sometimes dogs with minimal saddles can be confused as sables. It is very hard to figure out. In general, the eumelanin on a creeping tan dog will be more solid than a sable. The only sure way one can be certain that a dog has a saddle or creeping tan modifier is if the dog was born black and tan. Lastly, we have recessive black, which is rare and only occurs in herding breeds like the German Shepherd, Shetland Sheepdog, Schipperke, and Pulley, and looks identical to dominant black. So how can you tell a difference between a dominant black and a recessive black other than the breed? You can find out from breeding. A solid black puppy could only be born from two parents who are non-solid black 
if they carry a copy of the recessive black gene, whereas a dominant black puppy can only be born if one or both of its parents are also dominant black. So how would this work for breeding? Well, we do know that any dog that shows any agouti is a non-solid or homozygous little K, so all mating pairs would have homozygous K in front of their genotype. A heterozygous Big A dog can carry either wolf gray, tan point, or recessive black, creating the genotype Big A little A W, Big A little A T, or Big A little A. And if a homozygous Big A dog mated with a heterozygous Big A that carried wolf gray, 50% of the puppies would be homozygous Big A, and 50% of the puppies would be heterozygous Sable carrying wolf gray. So if two heterozygous dogs mated that carried wolf gray, 25% of the puppies would be homozygous sable, 50% of the puppies would be heterozygous sable carrying wolf gray, and 25% of the puppies would be homozygous wolf gray. But what would happen if a heterozygous sable carrying tan point mated with a heterozygous sable carrying recessive black? What would happen? When we put it in our Punnett square, we get four results. 25% of the puppies would be homozygous sable, 25% of the puppies would be heterozygous sable with tan point, and 25% of the puppies would be heterozygous sable with recessive black, and 25% of the puppies would be heterozygous tan point carrying recessive black. When a result like little aw little at or little at little a or little aw little a happens, we have to refer to which gene is dominant over the other, despite being recessive genes. Wolf gray is dominant over tan points and recessive black, and tan point is dominant over recessive black. So if two homozygous wolf grays mated, all their puppies would be wolf gray. If a heterozygous wolf gray carrying tan point mated with a heterozygous wolf carrying recessive black, the results would be 25% homozygous wolf gray, 25% heterozygous wolf gray with tan point, 25% heterozygous wolf gray with recessive black, and 25% heterozygous tan point with recessive black. It could be very complicated. But Lissa, you forgot something, you may say. You mentioned Brindle, but why haven't you talked about it? I did not forget about Brindle, but before I could have talked about it, you needed to learn about the A-Locus. So what exactly is Brindle? Brindle typically appears as black stripes on a red base. The stripes are eumelanin and the base is pheomelanin. So the appearance of both pigments can be changed by any gene that can affect them, eumelanin being affected by merle, harlequin, liver, dilution, graying, and recessive red, pheomelanin being affected by intensity, white markings, and ticking. Brindle is one of the recessive genes in the K locus. It is entirely dominant by big K, but it is dominant over little K. A dog with one or more little k BR alleles will express whichever allele it has in the A locus, but any of the red in its coat will be brindled. This means that the extent of the brindling on the coat depends on the A locus. A brindled sable would produce a dog that would be considered a solid brindle. A brindle tan point would produce a dog that is black but with brindle points. A brindle wolf gray is unknown. It's never been seen. Stripes can vary greatly, but it isn't known by which genes, if any, are responsible for the variations. Some brindles can be considered light or heavy, depending on the width of the stripes. Sometimes a brindled dog with black pigment may have what appears to be silver stripes, which is the result of black stripes on a creamy red background, and is usually found in sight hounds such as the Afghan hound or the borzoi. Long hairs, wire hairs, and curly hair can make it difficult to identify brindle markings and make the stripes less distinct. Some long hair breeds make their brindle pattern appear as a muddy, gray, brown color. And sometimes on light brindles, they may have solid red areas where the stripes seem to be missing, which is common in whippets, but is unknown how it happens genetically. So when trying to figure out how exactly they work with breeding, we would need two genotypes to help us. We need both the KBR gene and any of the Agouti genes. To make it a little simpler, our potential dog parents will all be homozygous little KBR, as heterozygous little KBR would introduce non-solids and may confuse you. So if two dogs that were both homozygous little KBR and homozygous sable, we would get a litter of puppies that are homozygous brindled and homozygous sable. And since wolf gray brindle does not exist, you can use the example of the A locus pun square to figure out the dominance of the other goody types. And we're done! This was a longer lesson than I expected. I thought about splitting up the K locus lesson and the A locus lesson, but then the brindle lesson wouldn't make as much sense as it is part of the K locus. But we are done! 
Now let the fun begin in the comments section. If you have a dog, does it fit into the K locus or the A locus? What is its breed? If you're confused, I'll even try to help you in the comments section. The next lesson is going to combine three loci, the B locus, the D locus, and the G locus. And I hope to see you there.